welcome everybody joining us today to Paint Happy Hearts. Uh, thank you for logging into the Zoom so that you can follow along. Today, we're gonna to be using uh, a white acrylic, deep yellow, phthalo blue, and magenta. And we're gonna create uh, all the colors of the color palette by mixing. So today's uh, painting, if you've joined us before, is gonna require a little more mixing than what we normally do. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start on our background. We're going to want to remember as we paint to do all of the sides so that you have a finished image when you're ready to start. Everybody receive two cups of white paint. We're going to use the smaller if you have a, a half filled cup. If not, we're just going to use our brush like a scoop and we're going to scoop some white onto your paper plate palette and you want to make a puddle about the size of a silver dollar. Plenty of white, because we're gonna use the foundation color to paint the entire background and side. So I have a big puddle. I'm gonna stick my brush into the white along one side. I'm sorry, into the yellow. And we're gonna start to mix and try and get a pastel yellow. We don't want it to be too bright or vivid because we want our other colors to be able to show up nicely on top. In particular, the yellow, if we had our background color too bold, we would kind of lose the pop of the yellow. So I'm mixing, stirring around. I'm using my one inch chip brush. It's a very inexpensive flat brush that works great for doing background. And really for this, we're just going to stroke the color back and forth across the canvas and we want to cover the entire surface. And you'll see it does use quite a bit of paint. And if you have to go back in and mix again, that's okay. I'm gonna cover the surface and then I'm gonna go up and hold my canvas in my hands to do the sides. And you might get a little paint when you're on that fourth side onto your hands because it's really hard not to keep your hands clean while we're doing this. Good news is it's water soluble and will wash off. I will warn you that if you get it on clothing, you do want to wash it right away. Otherwise, if you let it go and put it through a, a cycle in your washer dryer, it's going to become permanent. So as you can see, I'm just putting this really creamy pale yellow across my entire surface. I probably will need to mix again because I don't think I'm going to have enough. And you just want to do your best to have it match. And if it's a little brighter or a little paler, You'll just swirl it around and help equal it out. If you look at our original that we're working from, I have the creamy yellow and then I go in and I scrub a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink. So it's going to be modeled and muted and that's one of the reasons you don't have to worry if it's not exactly all the same. So I'm going to scoop some more white onto my plate, grab a little more yellow, and see how well I can do getting it to match. You wanna mix it well on your paper plate before you start putting it onto the canvas so that you don't have a streaky um, situation going on. And I'm pretty content with how close that is to the first time I mix. And I'll show you how I'm just gonna very easily go kind of hold the brush sideways and just go back and forth like this after I have the whole side coated, then I might run my brush along to smoothen out and not have any lumps. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So I have white mixed with the deep yellow in a very pale pastel tone. And I'm working to get my entire canvas and the sides covered. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, scrub my brush, and then do one straight swipe up and down. You can kind of hold your canvas from inside. That may help protect your hands or you might not mind because you know you can just wash it off with soap and water. So I now have three sides completed. I'm gonna flip my canvas, do the other side. And you can see I'm um, just scrubbing the brush across. No, no rhyme or reason 
no specific pattern with the strokes. And I'm going to sit my canvas back on my easel. If you have an easel at home to use, great. If not, tabletop and laying it flat is fine. So on my plate, I have just enough paint left to go ahead and finish up here. And if I don't, which I might not, I'll mix it just a little bit more. But we gave you a lot of white because everything that we're working with today is going to be some form of a pastel with the exception of the last part that we'll be doing where we are going to um, outline using the dark blue. So everything else will have white mixed to some level. So I am going up and down. You might choose to go back and forth or you might wanna have a bit of a swirling pattern. Whatever you choose is gonna be perfect for your painting. So one of the things that I do pay attention to is I do not like to see the canvas showing through when I paint with acrylic. So if you have white texture showing through, it most likely means, I gotta, sometimes the bristles come off. I wanna swipe my bristle off the canvas. Uh, it doesn't want to listen, but I don't like to have uh, bristle hairs and I don't like to have the white of the canvas texture showing through. So I have my entire piece covered. If you don't, don't worry, take your time, keep working. I'm gonna at this time open up my other colors. We have the blue and the magenta. And I'm going to use my wide chip brush, one inch wide chip brush. And I'm just gonna to touch the corner of the brush into the blue. This blue is super bright and I'm actually gonna blot it just a little bit on the paper towel. Otherwise it will be too strong. And I'm just gonna scrape a little bit of blue like this and then kind of swirl around and soften up the edges. So it's not strokes, but more of like a shadow. And I'm just gonna do that in a couple spots across the canvas to add some texture to the background. Once we have the background lead, then we'll start working on the hearts. And I'm gonna do it in a couple spots. I tend to, when I do something like this, I tend to do my corners. You could do all left side with blue and leave the right side for the other color. Again, I'm gonna take my brush and just touch the corner into the blue and get the smallest amount onto my brush. And then again, I'm gonna go back and use the paper towel and blot some of it off. That way I won't have it too strong. And I'm just gonna put a couple of these swirls and then I'm going to soften it up by brushing in a circle so that it doesn't look like a big stroke of blue, more a blue shadowing. And I don't want it to be too uniform you can see I'm just kind of scrubbing and marking across here and you just want to tone it down. If you had a section where your blue got too dark, you can always go back, take a little bit of your yellow and tone it down, scrub some yellow on top, or you can gently dip your brush into your water cup, blot your brush, and then do that. So if you look, I'll hold it a little closer. I have areas on here with just a little bit of blue scrubbed on for a nice soft muted finish. If you are feeling so inclined, you could do a little bit on the sides so that your sides where you have it kind of match up. And again, I'm just scrubbing it real rough. It doesn't have to look like any kind of specific shape. I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm not doing anything with my brush right now. I'm going to continue and I'm going to grab, just like we did with the blue, I'm gonna grab a little tiny bit of the magenta by just again, touching the corner of the brush into the paint. You can see there's just this tiny little amount on the brush and I'm going to do the same thing 
and take it and blot it onto the newspaper or your paper towel. And I'm gonna do this and add a little bit of this magenta color into the background. And I'm gonna soften it so it doesn't look like big splashes. Scrub a little if it doesn't want. I might go back, snag a little bit of the yellow and brush that across. And I'm just adding this tiny hint of this kind of like a cherry color. I'm blotting each time though so that it doesn't get too, too strong and too bold. I want my background to remain muted and pastel-y. The, the strong surge of color will come when we go ahead and um, start doing the hearts. So that's my little bit of scrub of pink and my scrub of blue. And that's going to be what we're going to work on now. And most of your canvas should be almost dry at this point. It's pretty interesting how quickly things um, dry when you're working with acrylic. I'm going to try to save my chip brush and I'm going to put it in water because we are done for the rest of this class using the chip brush. Everything we do moving forward will be using this half inch angle brush. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to scoop some more white onto my palette right where my yellow is. And I'm going to add some white. It might mix in with the yellow if you still have some on your plate. And I think what I'll do first, feeling wild, I'm going to do a pale green. So I'm going to take a dab of the blue and a dab of the yellow. And you can see I'm not putting a whole lot on my brush. We can always make things darker. It's a lot harder to make them lighter. So I want to make a minty pastel -y green and I'm going to build it up slowly. I'm going to go back, get a little more blue and a little more yellow and see if I'm happy with that. So I'm mixing and this is what we're going to do quite a bit of today. We're going to do a lot of mixing. So if it's not your favorite, be patient. The payoff will be good. So I have a fairly nice minty kind of um, green pastel. And for the heart placement, I don't want anybody to panic. I didn't draw hearts on here. I didn't give you a pattern of a heart because it's going to be free form. If you look at the hearts on here, every one of them is different. And I was very random with my placement. I just started thinking, oh, I think I'd like a green heart here. And I'm using this and drawing the heart, holding the brush almost like you would a pencil point and um, doing an outline. And then you go like this and pull in and I have my first heart place. So that's a lovely little mint green heart. Don't worry if your edges aren't real clear because we're going to do lines going over. So there's no mistakes. Um, Bob Ross used to say happy little mistakes. We're not going to have any mistakes because we're not saying that the hearts have to look any certain way. I'm going to do another heart here and the same thing I'm just pulling up and making the swirls. If the edge isn't clear, if you can kind of see a rough edge, just put more paint on your brush and then you're just going to pull your paint into the center. So I have two hearts now placed onto my canvas. They're about the same size. You can alter the size and go from big to little. I'm going to put a little tiny pastel green one right down here in the corner. Same idea, up, down, up, down, and then pull to color, color in the center. So I have three and I think, I think, I think, I'm going to do a little one over here and I'm going to have it start right along the edge and I'm going to have it go around here onto the side. So it's a little tricky if you're worried about doing that. You don't have to try and do one that extends over the side just yet but later on you might feel bold enough and um, have done enough parts where you're ready to do that. And I'm just making a little bump a little heart. I now have all the green I think I'm going to do 
I'm gonna clean my brush and get ready to mix my next color. I'm just gonna clean and then I'm gonna blot my brush on paper towel until it looks like it's pretty clear, which I feel okay now. I'm going to repeat, use your brush like a little spoon, scoop up some white. And we're gonna start with our next color. So we'll, I'm gonna stick with the yellow and I'm gonna scoop up some yellow out of my cup, put that onto the plate. And now I'm going to go with the magenta and work to make a peach. The magenta and the blue are a lot brighter and deeper. So maybe put it to the side and then pull it in as you need it. But I wanna try and make a nice peachy color So you can see on my palette, I have this beautiful rosy color, but I'm adding more yellow to get it into that peach tone because we're gonna have plenty of beautiful pink parts as well. But right now I'm gonna do my peach ones. If you look at the image that we're working from, not all of the hearts are solid. I have a few places where I did just an outline of a heart. So you're welcome to try that as well. I'm going to draw one here. And I'm just pointing my brush straight at the canvas and guiding it up. Okay, I think I might leave that as an outline. And I think I'll do a solid one over here. If you get a lump, which I just had, just go back and extend the edge. So I have this very pretty peachy carly color coming out here. And I have this heart placed over another heart, which is gonna come in nice when I draw my lines. Some of your hearts may not have another heart above and some of them you're gonna to wanna to have sort of like they're dripping down. So you can see on here in some places you'll see hearts placed where it looks like they're coming one from another. So kind of think about that when you're placing them onto the canvas as well. But again, there's no mistakes and they can be random and that will work as well. So I have to mix a little bit more. I got to get back to my palette, mix up some more of the peach. And I think I'll do a little mini one here. The tinier ones are a little harder with our angle brush, but still really easy in the long run because they don't have to be symmetrical or match up. I'm gonna do one more up here. So I'm just following it around, using the edge of the brush and then pulling the color in. And I have this happy little heart. And you can see here, my edge is not perfect. Bring it closer just to show you. It's not a perfect edge, but that's okay because we're gonna be outlining. So there's no need to stress. So I'm starting to get a nice little collection. I'm gonna rip, rub my paintbrush into the water cup. You do wanna jam the edge of the brush get up and down in the water to try and get the paint out from the head of the brush. So if you kind of go like this in your water cup, that also helps. And you can see, I don't really have any peach now showing up. I'm going to scoop white out of the cup again. And I'm going to scoop a little bit of blue. And I'm going to scoop a little bit of the uh, magenta. And I'm gonna to start to work on a purple. Now you can see, that the blue is definitely stronger than the magenta. So you might, again, put some magenta off to the side and start to work it in slowly until you get a good mix of pink and purple together or magenta and blue to make your purple. I'm happy with that color. The problem is, is I don't have a whole lot of it. So I'm going to um, 
do a little more mixing so I have enough to do several hearts. And I'm just gonna keep mixing on my palette. You don't wanna be mixing on your painting. So I'm very happy with this purple color. I'm going to do a nice big purple heart here. And I'm gonna vary the size of my hearts now. You're gonna see one get bigger than what we've done so far. And that's such a beautiful color. And I'm just gonna fill in my heart with this pretty purple color. And I want my lines along the edge to be a little cleaner, so I'll go back over them. And I have to mix again. So I'm doing the blue and the magenta to get some more of this purple. Pull some white in to make it pastel -y. And I just wanna clean up my edge. There we go. And I love that color. It's so pretty. I'm gonna do some more. So I'm gonna go back in and I think I'll put one down here. And I'm gonna be bold and have this one sort of extend off the bottom of my canvas. So if I have it go like this and curve around and come down. And I'm holding my brush same way for outlining the edges and then pulling it to fill in. So we've got another pretty purple heart here. And then I'm going to do an outline purple heart this time. I think I'm gonna try and have one be outlined. My purple right now is super blue. So I'm gonna add some more magenta, try and get it more on the lavender side. And I think I'll do just an outline of a heart here. If you are having a hard time, take a piece of newspaper or a paper plate and practice if you feel that will help. Okay, I'm gonna do another little outline one coming off the page here like this, right off of my canvas. And you only would see it if you're coming from a side angle, okay? So we've done pink and purple and mint, but we haven't done blue or um, the rose color. So I'm going to clean my brush. Again, you want to take your brush in your water cup and I'm kind of going up and down like this to help clean the paint out along the edges of the brush. And anytime I put my brush in the water cup, I definitely want to blot it and clean it with the paper towel so that when we're applying paint, you don't have water running down and dripping. That would not be fun. So I'm scooping white and I'm scooping some of the magenta and now I'm going to make a really pretty rose color. And so I have another color mixing on my palette and this is really a pretty color as well. I'm really liking the colors that we're working with today and I'm going to start to put some more hearts on. I'm going to use this beautiful cherry pink and I'm gonna make a nice big part here. And I'm pulling my color into the center to fill in and smooth out all my edges.
That's a nice color. And I'm gonna do some more of the pink. I'm gonna put one up here. If you have nice music on in the background, this can be very soothing and relaxing. You're just focused on the colors and enjoying the feel of the brush, pulling the paint across the canvas. I think I need another one here. I can be crazy and try and have it shown through behind the purple. Give it a little bit of depth. And there's another part placed up top. And then I think I might do an outline of a pink as well. And I'll do that over here. So you wanna make sure the tip of your brush is nice and clean when you're doing the outlines. Go back and forth, front and back so that there's no lumps on your brush. The surface of your brush looks clean and smooth. And when you draw your heart, you won't have to worry about any lumps or bumps. And there's a pink outline behind that one. Okay, I think I could use some little ones though too. I don't have a whole lot of little ones. So I'm gonna go back in and just very carefully put a couple little parts in. Because I think the little ones add some character. And again, they don't have to be perfect because we're gonna use our brush to give it some edging, which also kind of creates a nice little movement. I'm gonna have this one just go right off the edge up here. So I'll take my painting and make a little part leading over the edges. Like the, like the plant, the beautiful bleeding heart flower. So I kind of wrap it around and fill in just like we did before. Okay. So I'm gonna clean my brush and this time I'm going to do just blue with white. I'm gonna make sure my brush is clean and not loaded with water. When I can go like this and not see any color, then I feel confident I can go ahead and scoop some white and scoop some blue. And remember the blue is really strong and bright, so you don't need as much of that as you would with yellow or even the, um, the magenta. So I got this really pretty blue mixed. And I wanna make sure that my brush is also well mixed, not just the palette part. I wanna squeeze off any excess paint by rolling my brush and then going front and back like this. Again, that gives you a really clean edge on your brush. And now I'm going to add some blue parts. And I'm going to make this a big one up top here. And that's like a really pretty powdery blue. Clean up my edges. and fill in. And that's just pulling from the outside towards the center. And I'm just careful, placing my brush where the edge of the one heart is and pulling back. And that's how I'm working around that. So I'm gonna to wanna to add some more of these because this is really pretty. I'm gonna put a nice little part here. Mixing again, you'll have to keep going back in and mixing 
Acrylic dries very quickly and you don't want it to be too thick where it doesn't let your brush glide across the canvas. And again, I'm putting my brush along the edge of the one part and pulling away, and that's how I'm keeping a clean edge. And I think I might do a blue outline over here. And this one's going to intersect right a bit. And then I'm going to pull up. And there we had the blue outline for that one. And I think I'll do a couple little blue ones, maybe a medium sized one right here. And we'll just glide in our brush, making these curves, nice luscious curves and clean edges and pull in. I still want to make this one a little bigger, give it like a sassy, like it's got a little shoulder shrudge going on up here. And then I think if I can, I'd like to put a little one right here. And I can because it's my painting. And just like me, you can put whatever you want, wherever you want on the canvas. No right or wrong. We're not trying to make it look like a specific animal or place. We're just doing these happy marks floating across the canvas. So I'm going to stop there with blue because we have another color to do. Isn't this fun? We're doing the entire color palette. We're going to clean our brush really well. This time it's very important that our brush is clean because we're going to go to yellow and any other colors in the brush will show up. So I might clean my brush multiple times to make sure that nothing leads into the yellow. And again, you can tell if your brush is clean when you look at your paper towel and you have no hint or shadowing of any other color. I'm going to go back to my white, scoop some white, and I am going to add yellow and we want it to be bolder and brighter and more intense than what we had for the background. We don't want it to be the pure color of the deep yellow but we want to have it be nice and bold so it shows up and yellow typically is a hue and when you're painting with acrylic yellows a lot of times you'll see through the yellow but because we're adding white you're not going to be able to see through and I'm going to do a medium, I'm looking and that's not dark enough. If it's not contrasting enough from your background, go in and add more yellow because we want it to be a contrast from the background and pop. We will be able to make it pop even more when we add our um, outlines, but you can see once I added a little more yellow, it is showing up better and brighter. And so I now have my first yellow part. And I'm going to do another yellow part like this down here. I'm going to make it nice and big and have it go off the corner of this part of my canvas here. So I'll fill it in and then I'll wrap it around on the edges. Okay, so this looks really nice. One thing I do recommend that folks do is while you're painting and you're looking at your work and you're right on top of it, you can't always get a good feel for placement and um, whether or not you need to add or um, incorporate more. 
So it's a great idea to step back at least six feet from the work and look at it objectively from a distance and say, you know what, I'm going to have to put something else in that corner. It looks, it looks a little empty. I'm going to go in and put another couple parts over here because this part looks lonely. So I'm going to add at least one or two more yellow parts. I'm trying to decide where I want to squeeze them in. <laughs> I'm doing a little one right here. Being the last color that we're adding, it's a little more tricky. And I think I can do an outline again. I don't have an outline yellow, so I'm going to do that. And again, when we use our blue, that will help. So I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to just finish, um, if they feel like they need another heart somewhere, this would be the time to go ahead and put in the hearts. Also stop and take a look where you think your lines are gonna connect coming down. Start to have an idea where you want the lines for the hearts to come, okay? I kind of did it like this when I was looking at it and gave myself a little bit. You'll see some of the hearts don't necessarily have a line coming down. So that's okay too. If you have one that's off to the side and you don't think it's gonna work well, you don't have to worry. I really want another yellow heart though. I'm gonna throw one in right here. So I got all my yellows, I'm stepping back giving myself a perspective on whether or not there's some that I should add. I think I'm happy with the number of hearts that are on my canvas, and I think I'm in a good place. So at this time, I'm gonna clean my brush out really well. And while you're finishing, I'll talk to you a little bit about some things I saw on here that I kind of consider mistakes that I'm going to not do this time around. I was playing around and testing whether or not we should shadow some of the hearts. So you can see in the, in the purple, I tried shadowing. I didn't really enjoy that kind of shadowing. I didn't think that that helped the painting at all. But if you look up here in the pink heart, I really liked the way the pink heart was shadowed. So what I did was I had a pale pink and I put a brighter pink. And I think that's one of the things we're gonna work on now is we're going to give a little bit of shadow to some of the hearts by using a brighter color. So for example, I'm going to clean the yellow out of my brush and I'm gonna probably just do some shadowing on the pink and the blue and the purple. I think those colors pop really nice. So I'm going to go into a little bit of white back where my pink was on my palette and I'm gonna get some magenta and mix it and make a brighter, darker pink. Not full color magenta and not pastel. -y. And I don't need a whole lot of this because we're just gonna add dabs here and there. And once I have this brighter, darker pink, I can use that and I'm gonna pick a side. You either do your left or right, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed. I am right-handed, so I'm going to do my dark shadow color along the right side of some of my hearts. And I'm just going to swirl like that, little swoop. And I'm going to do it in some of the pinks, not a whole lot, just a little bit of a, a swirl. Okay. I'm going to add a little more, make it a little bit brighter. My brush is getting really lumpy because the paint thickens as we work. So I'm trying to make sure before I go to my painting that I wipe off all the lumps and have just a clean, sharp edge. And I'm going to do a little bit of a second and kind of break 
the edge. I'm not gonna be right on the edge of the heart. I'm kind of going alongside it. And I might put one even like a half of an inch to a quarter of an inch off the edge. And I'm gonna just do that in a couple places on my pink ones. So you're kind of doing like a sister outline, not directly on, and you can do more than one, but not on all of them. I wouldn't recommend doing it on all of them because that will be overkill. So I just have this nice little touch of brighter pink along some of the edges. And I think actually, I like this a lot. I'm going to do one or two spots where I use this bright pink and do an outline like that. Just not a whole lot, just one or two, maybe right here. I'll try and do a little tiny one. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna do the same thing now for the blue. I wanna get all of the paint out of my brush and make sure I don't see any pink when I clean. I still have a lot in my brush there. So I'm gonna go back to my water cup. You wanna check on the paper towel every time because color bleeding through or water dripping down will be a really um, unfun accident. So I'm going back to my palette. I'm scooping some blue. I'm putting it right on the dry section of white, and I'm going to make a deeper, darker blue, not the pure blue. We want to add white, but have it deeper and darker than the flat, the, uh, the hearts that we put on. There's no flowers or roses here today, folks. So I'm mixing till I get it to a nice, rich, shadowy color that we're going to use and do the same thing on our blue hearts that we just did on the pink hearts. So I have this darker tone of blue and I'm gonna do the same thing where I just put a line, maybe two. Little shadow. And I'm gonna do that each place that I put a blue heart. So it's not the full blue and it's not a pastel blue. It's somewhere in between. Okay, oh, I got one more over here I want to do. Just a little shadow and then a line. Okay, so that's our blue. And now I'm going to see if I can't mix my blue and my pink together to get a dark purple. So I went right into my pink and I want it to be a little bit darker, but not full strength color. So I'm adding way too blue right now. I need more pink. I'm getting closer to a purple. There we go. Now I've got a purple. Be patient with yourself if you're having a hard time. Color mixing is um, a science and a skill. And I'm gonna do that now with my purple ones. Oh, my pink is blending. Purple. Mm -hmm. I love the pink. <laughs> We're gonna put a little line going around. And again, I'm doing all of this on my purples to the right side. And just making little curves, a little shadow on this one again, and a line or two off to the side. So 
We've got a lot of beautiful shadowing going on. We've got some little lines. When we're all done with our hearts, we're going to start on the blue lines that are connecting. And um, I want to give everyone a couple minutes to make sure they're happy with where their hearts are and they're happy with their shadowing. Take a look again, step back. Never hurts to step back and take a clear look. I might go back in. I don't have a whole lot going on on this blue. So I'm going to just wipe the purple off my brush, go back up on my palette to where I had the blue mixed and give this a little bit of a second line. Okay. And I might do the same thing that I did with the pink where I did a little outline, I might do another little outline with this darker color and just make a couple little hearts that way. It's a little tricky to curve. There we go. Okay. So just touch and base, make sure everybody feels happy with what they got going on. Um, right here. Okay, so I'm done with my hearts. I think I have enough hearts. I'm happy with how things look. I'm going to clean my brush off again. And if you take a look, one of the things that I think worked really well on this pink one here was we put a little highlight. And you can see in a couple other places I put a highlight, but I was not as consistent. And I want to do the same thing with the white highlight that we just did with the blue. So I'm going to clean my brush again really well. Make sure we don't have any colors coming through. Squeeze the extra water out. And I'm just going to use my cup of white. And I'm not going to do this on every single one of them. I'm going to be particular and just do a little curve. Gently, carefully take your brush and do a little curve off to the one side. On this one here, I'll do it right through the center of the dark blue and around. Just to show you that it doesn't have to be on a specific spot. You just want to have a little swirl of white happening on some of the hearts. And I'm going to do it on a couple more and then I'm going to step away. You don't want all of them done. You don't want it to be uniform. Um, I have a couple green and peach that don't have a whole lot going on. So that might be a nice place to add. I got one more over here I think I'll do on the white. I mean, on my big yellow one over here. And I'm gonna run that right around the side as well. Okay, so these are just little touches that are giving it some pop and a little more interest. And at this point, I think I'm ready to go wild and just do my blues. Now you want to make sure there's no white because what the step we're doing next, you want pure phthalo blue as your um, definition line. And one of the things that folks may find easier, if you're going to have a hard time doing vertical lines, you can take your canvas, turn it on, on its side, and draw your lines that way. I prefer, and I'm going to do mine from like top to bottom. And I'm going to use my paint cup, dip my brush in, and I'm going to go side to side to make sure that I have a nice, clean line. If you want, 
use a paper towel or a paper plate and practice a couple times. But I find it easier to pull from the bottom up. You see which works best for you. It may be that you want to go top down, but it's your prerogative. I'm going to start from my top and I'm going to go straight up. If I have something like this, I'm going to go straight up and over. And I'm going to do that on each of the hearts that I'm connecting. So I'm going to put my brush right in the point of the bump of the heart and I'm going to pull up and if it's near the top, wrap it around the edge. This will be the only place where the blue lines wrap around the edge like that for the hearts. So this is how I'm starting and they don't have to be super thin and straight. If you look at what I have over here, take a look. There is varying widths in the blue. Some are thinner, some are thicker, and that's going to be exactly what we want. We don't want it to be super uniform. It would be, um, believe it or not, much less interesting if it was all perfectly aligned. One more. Sorry, I'm just gonna wrap the top and then I'm gonna stop there. And I'm just going to work my way down. This one here is going to stop at the pink part. It's not going up from behind, it's stopping there. And then it's going to come down like that. And this one here is going to go like this. And this one here is going to stop and be behind this one. And we're not going to see where it started or stopped. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to work from here to here. You want to make sure that your line goes from the bottom of the hearts above it. You don't want it to stop even an eighth of an inch before. And believe it or not, that will make it look a little sloppy. So bring it all the way to the edge of the heart above it. And I'm worried about lumps and bumps, so I'm keeping my brush as thin and as clean as I can. And I'm pulling down and up. This one I'm gonna have go up and up over the yellow to there. This one's gonna come here and go up. I got one here and up. And I'm just going to keep doing this and work my way from top to bottom. If you're doing it sideways, go left to right so you're consistent or right to left. So these are the strings that are holding the hearts. And you can see them. Some are going to go behind hearts. Some are going to go through hearts. And you may have some hearts that don't have a string, like this little guy here, this little guy here. So not all of them have to have the string. It's your call, but I would say they don't all need it. After I have that done, I'm now going to go and I'm going to outline all of the hearts um, with the dark blue. I didn't do, on, on the practice one, on the sample, I didn't do it, I'm looking, I didn't do it on both sides of every part. You'll see in some places I just did it on one side and that's okay. Or if you decide you like the way it looks, I'm gonna start at the top. I'm always worried if I were to bump with my hand. So rather than work on the bottom where my hand's eventually gonna be lean, if you start up at the top, and you're just gonna curve around. And I'm not going a full shape around the heart. I'm just doing part of it like this, and then maybe here and down here. Continue to check and make sure before you put your brush onto the canvas that you have a clean, sharp edge. That will make sure that you don't have a hard time trying to go back over something. Not that you can't, because that's what I'm doing here. 
but it is a little harder. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way up and down across the canvas, bringing in these blue lines. This is an example here where I'm not outlining the entire part, just part of it. If I'm leaving an area open, I'm keeping it to the right side of the heart, most of the left side is getting outlined. If you do a second line on the outside, it kind of gives it like a movement and makes it look like the heart is um, like pulsing and beating and happy and full of love. So this part is a little time consuming. For some, you might want to start to rush because you're getting tired, your arm might be tired. You've been at it almost an hour. But take your time. Take your time because this actually gives it the punch and um, definition that I think really pulls it all together. And if you rush at this point, it may not look as nice um, and you might have been like, oh, that ruined it, but that's just because you went too quick at the end in an effort to finish. If you look at the difference from the top to the bottom, there's a whole lot more um, going on up top. And I really like the way these blue lines edging kind of give it a finished, polished look. And again, it doesn't have to be the entire part. but I think you'll be happy that you took your time and went around and outlined each other. This is really nice. I'm happy with how the blue is defining and creating a nice shape for my hearts. And as you can see, I'm just slowly going from one side to the other. Top to bottom. And the lines are not uniform or clean. You just don't want to have the lumps of paint. That's the one thing we're working to avoid. And you'll see contrast in here. You can see a light blue, a medium blue, and now we have the darker blue. And that's a really nice accent to the piece. We do videotape this and it does get shared and posted on our YouTube page. So anyone who picked up materials and isn't able to complete or um, wants to do this again with friends, again, our colors are deep yellow, phthalo blue and magenta with white. And we mixed all of our colors using those three primaries and the white to make pastel. And you can watch the video. You can encourage friends to watch the video. And you can plan to join us when we do this again in the spring. And 
we meet most likely on a Tuesday in April. And we'll have a wonderful design selected for you then. And we'll look forward to having return visits from folks who are with us today. So I'm getting down to the bottom. I only have a few more hearts here to outline. And I think you can see that the outline has a really nice touch and gives a sense of movement. And you don't have to be especially skilled because we're not trying to make something look exactly like anything else. We're trying to just make parts and these wonderful pastel -y colors. And I really feel like this is something anyone could join us for. Little people, folks who have never held a brush in their hands before, and folks who love art and painting and look for an opportunity to be able to spend time with others sharing their love of art. We do look forward to someday having the classes here in the library and being able to welcome you in person. We just can't tell you when that will be right now. So I have a couple little hearts not outlined. I'm gonna do this last one over here. And then I think I'm gonna put my brush down and stop. This one's hard to reach. So I'm gonna turn my canvas sideways, come in around the edge here. And leave it at that. And we've just created happy hearts. Mm -hmm. Hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, the painting, the colors, the nice, simple, and fun design. Valentine's is coming up on Monday. And if you don't have a sweetheart, you have sweet art. Okay. <laughs>